friend we have in Jesus All our sins and griefs to bear To Hebrews chapter 11 We're going to quiz you here just a little bit The theme for this year Anybody remember the theme that we're trying to focus on this year from the messages? Lifting up Jesus. Thank you, Miss Bessie. Why do we want to lift up Jesus? What does it mean to lift up Jesus? It means to exalt Jesus, put Jesus in a place first that people can see Jesus. First, lift up Jesus because Jesus says in John chapter 12, if I be lifted up, I will draw all people to myself. Jesus can help people. Do you agree with that? I do. As I said, I see what the Lord has done for my mom. I see what the Lord has done for Tim. What do you have? Two years, two and a half years? Pancreatic cancer. Do you want to tell them the good news about your pain meds now? I'm almost on. From 180 milligrams of morphine a day to... 15 every other day. Right now. We're all done next week. And he's off of it because, according to the doctors, there's no pancreatic cancer. We praise the Lord. Have it for two and a half years. We need to lift up Jesus, folks, because Jesus says, when I get lifted up, People will come to me, and that's what Jesus wants. Jesus wants people to come to him because Jesus is the one that can turn our lives around. I know people may criticize me for being a preacher, but that's what my job is, is to, to proclaim Jesus Christ. I've told you before many, many times, doctors said to me years ago, we can do surgeries, we can give medicines, but healing comes from God. Just because you take medicines doesn't mean that it's going to work right. Just because you get surgery doesn't mean it's going to correct the problem. It takes healing, and healing comes from God. Any of y'all ever had surgeries that didn't help? Why not? It takes God's blessing for it to work. Any of y'all ever take medicines that didn't work? Why didn't it work? Because it takes God's blessing. And Jesus is, it's going to make some of y'all feel uncomfortable. Jesus is God. God the Father, God the Son. He is God the Son. And there's also God the Holy Spirit. So we're on this year-long study to try to lift up Jesus. How do we lift up Jesus? By doing what Jesus says. People say, well, why, why are you doing that? Because I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. We lift up Jesus by doing what he says. People end up saying, you are, you are a follower of Jesus Christ. Yeah, I am. My faith is in Jesus Christ. And today we're going to look at, once again, I'm going to go back to lifting up Jesus Christ through our faith. Um, here a few weeks ago, we had started going through Galatians chapter 5. The reason we go through Galatians chapter 5 because it talks about the fruit of the Spirit of God. That Jesus, when he went back to heaven, he says, I'm going to send my Spirit, and the Spirit of God comes to live within us, and the Spirit of God wants to start producing fruit within our lives. The fruit that we've been looking at over the course of the past, I think this is either the third or fourth week, the fruit of faith, what we believe in. And this morning I'm going to go back to Hebrews chapter 11 because we're going to look at a passage of Scripture. I'm going to start at the 11th verse and read down through the 16th verse. Faith in, in this passage of Scripture is faith in heaven. Here's what, this is what the Word of God says. Hebrews 11 verse 11. By, by faith, Abraham, even though he was past age and Sarah herself was barren and was unable to become a father, 
because he considered him faithful who had made the promise. And so from this one man, and he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, as countless as the sand on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. And they admitted that they were aliens and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would, would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. <clears throat> Last week, we started talking about Abraham. We had spent a couple weeks first, we had talked about Abraham. I mean, we had talked about Cain and Abel. Then we talked about Noah. Last week I started talking about Abraham. Abraham was a man, if you go back to Genesis chapter 12, it tells the story of Abraham. Abraham was 75 years of age. God ends up saying to him, he says, Abraham, I really want to bless you. I want to make of you a great nation. But in order for you to do that, I need you to say goodbye to your family and your friends. I need you to pack up. I need to leave have you leave the place where you've been living and I want you to just follow me and so last week we started taking a look at Abraham, I, I used as an illustration Clyde and Janet Whitkey over there they are both now 70 years of age no problem uh, she's actually two weeks older than he is <laughs> but anyhow y'all are in good health and I talked with you last week that here you've lived since 1973, was it? In this area? 73? That five years from now, four and a half years from now, when you're the ripe old age of 75, how difficult would it be for you to end up saying goodbye to your family here? For those of you that know anything about Clyde and Janet, their family is most important in their lives. But to end up having to sell your house, pack up your belongings, and to just start heading off in a direction. And <laughs> Janet could end up, because this was the story of Abraham. <clears throat> we read that God appeared to Abraham. He didn't appear to Sarah. So Sarah was kind of at his mercy. And Abraham says to her, God says, we just need to leave. And so I could see Janet saying to Clyde, says, hey, Clyde, where are we going? And Clyde looks at her and says, I don't know exactly where we're going. How long is it going to take us to get there? Clyde says, I don't know how long it's going to take us to get there. And then she says, well, do we really need to leave in order for God to bless us? And Clyde says, yep, we need to leave. Will we ever see our family again? Clyde says, I can't guarantee that we will ever see it again. All that I know is that if I really want God to bless, we've got to leave. That's the story of Abraham. Now let me just ask you a question. How many of you people would be willing to do that? 75 years of age. Anybody? Any takers? See, Abraham is a man who lives by faith, and I've said this before. Faith is not what you say you believe. Faith is what you act upon that shows you believe it. The book of James ends up saying this. Faith without works is dead. Clyde could have stayed. Clyde could stay here and he could say, you know what? I do believe that God would bless me, but guess what, honey? We don't need to leave. Does he really believe that he needs to leave? He doesn't really believe it until he's willing to make that separation. So we started looking at Abraham in this incredible journey of faith because it took him hundreds of miles away. 
And what this passage of Scripture says, Abraham lived his entire life and he never did get to see that fulfillment of the promise. Did God lie? No. God didn't lie. God never lies. This passage of Scripture ends up saying that all of these people, 13th verse, all of these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. They admitted that they were aliens and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. I was grateful this morning, Miss Bessie, to see that the, the songs that you had chosen and also the response of reading have to do with heaven. Because this passage of Scripture says that these people were looking for a heavenly city. And I want to say, folks, that's what brings us together. Why do you folks come to church? Why do you come to church? Well, you say, well, I come to church to worship God. Is it really? The reason you come to church because you want to go to heaven. Isn't that what church is about? Is it not just pleasing? It is pleasing God. But is it the real reason that you and I want to please God? We want to go to heaven. If all there was to life was just what we have in this life, why would any of us want to go on? I maybe shouldn't say this, but I will go ahead and say it. At 58 years of age, if the only thing that I could look forward to from this point on was just getting older, more forgetful, more decrepit, why would I want to keep on going down this road? Some of y'all say, well, at least I get to spend some time with my family. Let me ask you a question. So you spend time with the family. Let's say I could live another 20 years. Of course, my mom and dad are, my dad's going to be 85 this year. My mom's already 83. I don't know that they're going to be around in the next 20 years. So my parents will say that my parents pass away. As I look around the congregation here, you folks are my church family. Chuck is going to turn 85 here at the end of next month, right, Chuck? You going to be here 20 years from now, Chuck? I don't want to be. <laughs> you don't want to be? I want to go up. We want you to be here. But I'm just saying, not only will my family be gone, but the largest percentage of the congregation here probably isn't going to be here. I've got a lot of heartache that's facing me. I got physical problems that are going to be facing me in the next 20 years. I got a lot of heartache that's going to be facing me in the next 20 years. I know some people end up saying, you know what, you need to live so that you can enjoy life. And I end up thinking many times, okay, so let's say 20 years from now, I've had an opportunity to go down to the Bahamas. I've had an opportunity to go over and to see the promised Israel. I've had a chance to go do a lot of stuff, you know, whether it's fishing or golf or whatnot. But I still come to the end of that 20 years and I know that I'm going to die. If I don't have heaven to look forward to, what difference does it make what I do? I'm going to die. Am I right? Good point. You see, inside all of us hearts, we have the same longing that Abraham does that there has to be something more and more importantly there has to be something better we're a very blessed people here I oftentimes think about the people around the world that are born into abject poverty they don't even know where their next meal is going to come from 
They'll never know what it is to sleep in a regular bed at night. All that they'll ever know is sleeping on the ground. They'll never know what it is to have a refrigerator with food in it. They'll never know what it is to have air conditioning during the summer. We grew up on, me and Dave grew up on streets part of our lives, so we know it's like. And even that, stuff here in America is a whole lot better than what it is in other places in the world. Beauty's in the eye of the beholder. I mean, we, I don't know about David, myself, out there was scary at first, but there's a lot of good people out there. There's a lot of beauty in the world. There are. And whether you've got a nice bed or you just got a place to lay for the night, it's all what's inside here of how you perceive it and how you feel. It is. My point in bringing it up is that many times, even though we may have things nice, there's a lot of people in this world that are going to go through without anything in this world. They're not going to have enough food to eat every day. They're not going to have clothes to wear. They're not going to have decent shelter to live under. They will spend their entire lives in abject poverty. They will live their entire life without anything. And this isn't just wishful thinking on my part when I get to talking about heaven. The Bible ends up saying, do you realize that everybody has an opportunity to go to a place that will exceed your greatest imagination. Do you and I really believe that there is a place that it will be worthwhile? Everything we go through down here on earth. As I said, when I get to looking at what I'm facing over the course of the next 20, 30 years, some of y'all say, well, Tim, you're being pessimistic. These are some of the greatest days of your life. Okay, let's just suppose everything goes nice for the next 20, 30 years. 30 years from now, I'm going to be 88 years of age. I'll be older than you are, Chuck. And I tell you what, I know that this body of mine is going to wear out, just like yours is worn out. Eric? In Georgia, when I was working for the railroad, we talked about that a while back. Um, I was going out looking just for something to do, and just alone, some entertainment, you know. And uh, I went to one of those clubs that I just looked up, and just for somewhere to go be social. And... This crack addict came up to me. Mind you, I'm driving a nice sports car. He comes up and is trying to hustle for some money. And I told him, I said, well, I ain't got money. I ain't got gas to get home. Lied to him, you know, just, just to see what was that. And this man reached in his pocket, pulled out. He goes, I don't got a lot, man. Pulled out five dollars and handed it to me. He says, it sounds like you need more than I do. And I said, you're willing to do that? He goes, yeah. So I handed him back 50 bucks. And he goes, I'm going to buy drugs. And I said, I know, but that's not the point here. I said, the point is, is is I did that on purpose because I just w wanted to see your character. I said, don't be ashamed of what, who you are, what you do. I said, you can always find yourself away from stuff. I said, so stand walk away proud and, and, and just try to learn from that and because I learned something from it too. I mean, that man came to me to hustle me for money. And I'm sitting there driving a sports car and you clearly can see that I am not broke. And the man was just without hesitation reaching his pocket. And when I said, I said, don't you need that? And he goes, no. He goes, I'll find Somebody will give me more money. He goes, I'm not. He goes, somebody will help me. I said, well, it's not going to get you any closer. And he says, someone help me. And that's why I turned around and I handed the money. And I said, be proud of who you are. And I stand up and I said, you'll find where you need to be in life. Well, and I pray that he was able to get past, you know, his need at that time. And this is what the Bible ends up asking us to do, is that you and I need to walk by faith, believing that there is a place that is going to be worth it. You know, the, my point in telling these other stories about growing older and doing all the fun things in life, the reality is that you and I are all have an appointment with death. We're all going to have to die. And here's what I'm thinking. If we're all going to die, if there isn't anything beyond that, what difference does it make? What will you enjoy in this life? If we just die and there's nothing past it, what difference does it make if you make all the trips that you want, if you own all the possessions that you want, if you end up dying, what difference does it make? The Word of God comes along and says, look, death is not the end. The Bible invites us to go on a journey just like Abraham that says, look, if you will trust in me, if you will place your trust in me, I can tell you there is a place that is prepared for you. And it's good news for all of those people around the world that have never had anything in their life. 
yeah, it's tough growing up here in some of these places in America, but I can tell you this much. When I was in Kenya back in 1987, you want to talk about, and Kenya was one of the more progressive countries there out there. Kenya back when I was there in 1987, I mean, the, the people were there were modern compared to some of those countries over there. And I think about the people around the world that are never going to have, you know, a decent roof over their head. The good news of the Bible is that God has prepared a place and God invites us to go to this place and we travel by faith just the way that Abraham did. Does that mean that we just kind of sell all of our belongings and, and we end up uh, just start being nomads and going around the country? No. But the way that we live by faith is that we take the word of God and we listen to God and we obey God and we trust in God and we look beyond the pains and the heartaches of this life and know that there is a heaven. This past Thursday, I did the funeral for John Pavlik. John Pavlik, the way that I first got acquainted with him, was he came to our jam session. He came here with another gentleman, Tom Postlewaite. Tom was up at um, uh, up toward Chester in a care facility up there. But anyhow, John Pavlik, I first became acquainted with him. And this was a, a year ago, this past probably January, February, when he first started to come. In the spring of last year, not this year, the spring of last year, he ended up getting a diagnosis that he had lung cancer. And his daughter, who knew that John had been coming here, John was born in Weirton, his daughter ended up calling me. She got the phone number and she called me and she said that her dad, John, was in the hospital up at Weirton. Would I be willing to come up there and see him? And I did. I went up there and had prayer with him. Well, as it turned out, when he got out of Weirton Hospital, he got placed over in Villa Royale, over there behind Dick's Sporting Goods. I've been doing chapel services over there now for, I don't know, three or four years, something like that. And John became one of the regulars at the Bible study. At the funeral service the other day, I read as part of it, he has a granddaughter that he was very fond of, and she had interviewed him. Uh, she was working on a course with college, and it was for a psychology course. And one of the questions on, that she was supposed to ask her grandfather was, are you a religious man, or have you ever been very spiritual? And his response was, I never was before, but I am now. And it led me to believe that because of what he was experiencing in his life, he was coming to grips with the reality of what I'm talking about. Our lives here are soon going to be over. And it made him wonder what happens after our life is over. And so he would come to the Bible studies. I can't say that I ever had to sit down and talk with him heart to heart. He was always very respectful. In fact, I jokingly told them at the funeral service the other day, John became kind of my sergeant at arms. One day when we were there, one of the other residents was a little bit disruptive as I was doing the Bible study. And of course, as, as a minister, you just kind of learn to roll with the punches. You know, something's a little bit out of normal in a nursing home. You don't get too alarmed because anything can happen, okay? The next week when I went back, he came up to me and he was, he was pleased as punch. I, he, was a, he was a military veteran, 30 years Air Force, okay? And I felt like that he wanted me to pin another medal on him. Because one of the residents that had been very disruptive, he says, after you left the other day, he said, I went over there and I told her, you don't act like that in the church service. When you come to the church service, you just need to be quiet and listen to what he said. In fact, he chewed her out so much, I don't know if she moved to a different facility, but I've not seen her back since. Of course, I've not been able to go in the past six months. But I would end up talking in the, in the chapel services about, folks, do you know why we are Christians? It has to do with what I'm talking about here. We all want a place that's going to be eternal. 
that's better than what we've got here. That's what this relationship with God is all about. To put us in right standing so that when our time here on earth is up, and it's going to come up. I stand here and I look at the back of the sanctuary and I see Janet Riggs over on this side. It's only been about a month since we said goodbye to Lonnie. Goodbye for now, but not forever. I look over on this side and I see Darlene with her twin sister in law twin sister-in-laws on either side of her had to say goodbye to Mole Buddy 107. I look here in front and I see Michael, whose brother was only about a year and a half older than me, 60 years of age. What is church all about? It's about folks preparing to go to a place. Is there really a place? When I stood there at the funeral on, on Thursday, I ended up saying to the family, you know, I oftentimes will do this at funeral service. When I go to the funeral homes, invariably I will hear somebody say, well, so-and-so's in a better place now. And I told them, I says, I hope and pray that's the case. But the Bible says, not everybody, when they pass away, is going to go to a better place. You say, I live by faith in what the Word of God says. The Bible says that there's one of two places you're going to go. You're either going to be accepted into heaven, or you're going to be rejected and have to not just go to hell. It says in the book of Revelation, hell gets thrown into the lake of fire where there's going to be punishment forever. I live by faith. I live believing that there is a place that I can go to. One of these days when I say goodbye to my loved ones, for those that know Jesus Christ, I won't say goodbye to them forever. I will say so long for now. And I will see them again. Because I believe that there is a place that has been prepared for us Amen. by Jesus Christ. And it's that that brings us together, folks. We are all on a pilgrimage as we go through life to get to heaven. And we get to heaven through our faith in Jesus Christ. I'm going to go back just one second. I'll make this quick. I said to the folks at the nursing, at the funeral home the other day, I said, the thing that bothers me the most these days about people is that they think that what they imagine is reality. When they say so-and-so is in a better place, well, if I get to applauding them on that, I could end up, Tim, what does that better place look like? Tim might end up saying, well, I think that it's a place with lots of water. I could go to Miss Bessie, Miss Bessie. I think it's a place with lots of trees. Everybody, just because you and I can imagine something doesn't mean that that's what it is. I told them at the funeral home on Thursday, I said, I could imagine right now that I'm in Hawaii. Boy, it sure is nice here in Hawaii. I like the feel of that water splashing up on my toes. I like the feel of that sunshine on my face and that little breeze. And y'all are sitting there saying, our preacher has flipped his lid. You see, just because I imagine something doesn't mean that it's true. So the good news about the Word of God is that God says what I'm telling you is true. There really is a place that everybody can go to. And the way that you end up going there is through coming to Jesus Christ and saying, Jesus, I believe that you can I also make it a point when I do the funerals, and I say this to you folks often, and I said it to them at the funeral the other day. Do I think that I'm going to go to heaven because I'm a preacher? Hey, God, it's me, Tim. I'm a preacher. I guess I earned the right to come up there. God says, no, no, no. You may be a preacher. You've got a lot of other problems. <laughs> Am I going to go to heaven because I read the Bible? Am I going to go to heaven because I give money? Am I going to go to heaven because I try to do nice things? I go to heaven because I believe in Jesus. Jesus can get me there. Jesus died on the cross 2,000 years ago for all of my sins. My past sins, my present sins, all of the sins that I will ever commit. Jesus Christ died to pay my sin debt so that I could go to heaven. The only reason any of us go to heaven 
is because of Jesus. And I said it to the folks at the funeral home the other day, and I say it to you today. Have your faith in Jesus. There really is a place. We read about it with our response of reading. That was just one of the places in the book of Revelation where it describes what heaven is. Heaven is a place where there's no more tears, there's no more pain, there's no more sorrow. All of those things are passed away. Heaven is also a place with the streets of gold. It is a place where there are mansions. Jesus says, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it weren't so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Heaven is a place where you've got pearly gates. Gates that are made out of a single pearl. Folks, there really is a place. And as followers of Jesus Christ, we walk by faith to get to heaven. Faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, I believe you. I believe there really is a heaven. I believe that I can get there. And it's not because of what I've done. It's because of what you did for me. When I commit my life to you. I want to live for you. So I pray that you and I might continue down this journey. And if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you need to. You think that you're good enough to get into heaven? All I can say as a minister is I'm glad that you think that you're good enough because I can tell you this much about me. I know that I'm not good enough. In spite of all the good that I've ever done, there is far more bad about me than there is good. But thanks be to God, the good news is God sent Jesus who said, anybody that will come to me I will save them. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. If you don't have Jesus, you need Jesus. I'm on a journey to heaven. How about you? Shall we pray? Father, I pray that the message this morning might be a reminder to us that just as Abraham learned to walk by faith, he believed that there really was a place that you prepared for him. May we walk by faith believing that you have a place prepared for us. We may not get to experience everything here on earth that we would like, but thanks be to you, Father, you've got a place prepared where we will experience not only everything we could imagine here on earth, but we're going to experience far more. John the Apostle writes many times in heaven that words failed him to describe how wonderful it was. Help us, Father, to keep our eyes on you and stay on this journey until you call us home. As we prepare to sing an invitation hymn, if there's anybody here that has never given their heart to Jesus, help them to do that and to accept by faith that Jesus can get them to heaven as well. We love you. Bless this message to our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Turn to page 415 and please stand.
morning. Pray if you're able to come back tonight. We are going to have a hymn sing. And uh, it's just a time of worshiping the Lord and thanking God for all that He's done. Um, all hearts and minds clear? I'd like to say Yes, ma'am. I think the music this is how God works. I think the music how God works. And James said the response of reading out Saturday. And you, I don't know, we can pick up on this, but this is the way God works. Amen. Well, thank you very much, Miss Bessie. Amen. What she said was that she had picked the songs out a month ago, and Jean had picked the responsive reading out. So it wasn't like they sat down and compared notes. But um, she wanted to know when I ended up deciding. I've just been going through this thing on Abraham, so it just kind of fell in line. I hadn't necessarily planned on preaching it a long time ago. I've just been working through this thing on faith. So it's just testimony of the way that God has worked together. God is good all the time. time. God is good all the time. Amen. Well, let's be dismissed this morning with a closing word of prayer. God bless you folks. Really do appreciate you being here. Let's have a closing prayer. Clyde, lead us in this prayer. Would you please? Lord, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for we have this place here and come and hear your word and what you want us to hear, Lord. And just bless everybody here. Give everybody on the prayer list and bring us back to the next good time. In your precious name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.